Good evening. Our opening song is not in the books, but it will be on the screen. Here I am to worship. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Celebrate this 31st week of ordinary time. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments, which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him. Since he lives forever, to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. 
He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things I think we have to remember when we're reading the gospel is that the rabbis of Jesus' time counted 613 laws in the Torah, and we think 10 are tough. There's just no way that the average person could know all 613 of those laws. No wonder you might hear someone of that time ask for clarity as to exactly which is the most important of them all. You might even need to be a scribe or a Pharisee. I read somewhere recently that the Professional Golfers Association, the PGA, I read somewhere recently that the PGA's official rule book is over 160 pages long. We've got some pretty good golfers in this parish but I really doubt that any of them know all 160 pages full of rules for for golf. But suppose someone asks us to boil down those 160 pages and tell them what golf is all about. You can simply tell them that the idea of golf is to get a little ball into a cup, even though there's a lot more more to the game than that. And now for the scribe. The scribe was likely a member of the Pharisees. Are his questions sincere or are they asked in order to trip Jesus up? It's hard to tell at first. So this scribe is asking Jesus to boil down all 613 laws into the greatest one, the most important one. Jesus, knowing that he is speaking to the experts in the law, quotes the law himself, 
we heard it read in the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. But Jesus gives him another. He quotes Leviticus. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What does Jesus mean by these answers? First of all, everything boils down to love. The idea of golf is to get the ball in the hole. The idea of football is to get the ball in the end zone. Jesus would say you can't obey the law without love. Or as Paul puts it in Romans, love is the fulfilling of the law. Without a spirit of love, obedience to the law means nothing to God. Second, true love is all-consuming. See that God's standard of love is all-consuming. We are to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. And we are to love our neighbor the same way we love ourselves. The Pharisees and the scribes were consumed with the law for the same reason many are consumed by it today. They thought that by obeying the law, they could earn favor with God and thus a place in heaven. The law was seen as some sort of a ladder they could climb straight to heaven. This belief continues today. It's not uncommon today to hear someone say that While they know they aren't good enough to earn their way into heaven, they hope to do their part to gain gain God's love. God will certainly reward their sincere efforts, but see that Jesus' summary of the law makes it harder, not easier, to earn our way into heaven. Who can honestly say to God that they have loved him with all of who they are? We all fall short of that. And third, love for God and love for others are not separate items. Jesus was asked to give the most important commandment of all, and yet he responds by giving two commandments. But we shouldn't read this as two separate priorities in our lives. These two foundational commandments are connected to one another. We fulfill the command to love God by loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is exactly what the Apostle John writes in the first letter he wrote. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. So it's not that I am to exhaust myself loving God and then with whatever is left, I love my neighbor. No, they go together. My love for God is seen in my love for others. And then the scene ends in a curious way. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And so for now at least, for now Jesus has silenced those who sought to trap him in his words. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was married. He was again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as a family united in faith and baptism, let us with confidence bring our needs and prayers before our loving God and Father. For Pope Francis and all leaders of the church, may God send his spirit to love and strengthen them as they minister to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As Respect Life Month draws to a close, may we continue our commitment to respect and protect the gift of every human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the dedication of our beloved Resurrection Church on Monday, November the 1st, may we remember that the true beauty of the church is the baptized members of the mystical body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Emerson Adler, who is being baptized this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may God invite them into their final resting place in his presence for eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Larry Breivogel, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions that you hold in your hearts today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, we place these needs before you and trust in your promises to love us and give us what we need. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. You ready?
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. I know you want to get home for Notre Dame at 6.30. (laughs) Me too. Uh, First of all, just wanted to call attention to one of the prayers of the faithful this evening. Uh, On November the 1st, 1981, this building was dedicated. And so this will be 40 years since its dedication coming up on Monday. It's a good reminder for us to continue to pray for Resurrection Parish. As you go out into the narthex on the right-hand side or some of Annie Rose's Bible study sign-ups, in the center you'll see uh, several quilts, and on the left-hand side several boxes uh, with envelopes in them. Every family has an envelope with some raffle tickets in it. We ask that you take that and uh, take that envelope and sell the tickets that are in there so we can make as much off of this raffle as we can, to be honest with you. Um, and and raffle off these beautiful quilts. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.